Well, this bus came in with a pretty long list of things that need to be looked at. Number one is it's not building air fast at all. It's very, very slow. It's got big air leaks. The air dryer is not working. It's not purging. Um, the pull chain drain valves aren't working on it. The a couple of them, the hoses or the ropes snapped off of them. The cables that go to them, other ones, it's just not working. Uh, the oil pressure gauge isn't working. Um, big oil leaks everywhere. So we really got to tear in deep into this one. But the big problem is, is it's big air leaks. It's not building air fast. Uh, and the air dryer is not working. Uh, leaky wheel seal on one side, just lots of lots of items. Well, the air dryer is not purging, but when it was purging, it was passing a lot of oil out of it. Since the air compressor was passing so much oil, we're gonna replace it with a used one that we have here. Uh, I just wanted to show how this is how the unloader valve works. So when the builds up amount of pressure, the governor pushes air through here, that stops the compressor from making air. All right, we're getting inside the air dryer here. I see why it's probably not working is everything's so gummed up and caked up with debris and oil residue and cooked on oil. It's just nasty. So nothing's working in here. We're going to get this all cleaned up. We're going to replace the purge valve on here, rebuild it, all new O-ring seals, uh, get everything cleaned out. This is an AD-9 style air dryer, but it's so gummed up and caked up. It's nasty inside. We're also going to put a new desiccant filter in it as well. how much oil oil poured out of the lines when he disconnected it too compressor was definitely passing oil all right so we got the new compressor installed we had to drain all the coolant obviously in, in order to do that well with this top hat on here it's hard to see where the oil is really coming from but it looks like it's coming from the end of the axle shaft because it's not if it was the wheel seal it'd be back behind on the like inner it's wheel more from that gasket or is it coming from the seal oh yeah it's coming from there Hopefully they just loosened up. Oh, they're so long. Yeah. That's not a good sign. Oh, shit. That's stepped up, not broke. I can't leak. Jesus. Well, at least like half of these aren't holding torque, so we're gonna figure out if we gotta replace studs or nuts or see what's going on, but yeah, it's definitely loose. Can you say this one? That was the first one, it's not getting any tighter, right? It's just, it's mm -hmm. right. So we're using our thread checker here. And we got down here, and it doesn't fit in half inch. It's fine on one end and coarse on the other, it's a stud. And five eighths, it'll thread in, but it's loose. You can wiggle it. So it's something between half inch and five eighths, which would be nine sixteenths. So why does this thread checker not have a nine sixteenths? <laughs>
removing the nut pulled the stud out. <laughs> so you, the threads are stripped down there, but it must really got some bad threads in the nut too, so that it bound on it as we're taking it out. But. Go ahead and go, yeah, go all the way around. Some we replace studs on, some we just put new nuts on. But we get them, get them all torqued here. Skip, mm -hmm. skip, yeah, skip that one. Okay. Trying to get this stud out with the double nut technique here. This is our last one, the only one that we can't get torque on right now. Shorter wrench, maybe. No coolant on the other side. It's leaking out over here. So I'm kind of investigating. Definitely some coolant in between the radiator fans. I have to pressurize it to figure out where it's coming from. It looks like this radiator is leaking. The hose is a little bound there. Well, this main airline coming off of the air compressor is leaking. It's got a big hole right in the side of it, so that's going to make it build air slowly. All right, so we have that new braided hose made. It's like that'll handle the heat better because it's hot, hot air that comes out of there. So that problem is fixed. Where that hose had worn through on that bolt, it's not touching any bolts now. It was touching against that bolt earlier. All right, now let's get to the air tank drains and see what's going on and how much water and oil is going to be in them. So it's, it's acting really weird. Well, I had to pull it, I pulled it that way originally, like towards the rear. It won't pull the other way? No. Straight sideways? The way the pull chain's mounted, you can't really pull on it. It has to have a side load to discharge, and it's never going to work very good this way. So we're going to put a 90-degree fitting on it uh, once we take it off and, and change it so that it pulls the right direction. He's going to use a bar to push against it so he's not close to it because we already know there's a bunch of water and stuff inside here. We don't want to get it all over him. <laughs> you still getting wet? Yeah, it's coming right at me. <laughs>
it's running on my butt. Definitely oil mixed in that water that came out of the air tank there. A lot of oil in that water. That's why it's got that green color. It's getting oily water out of this too. It's draining right now. There's no air pressure. building air pretty fast here um, I got my foot on the throttle just a little bit here but um, yeah it's it's definitely the air compressor is working everything's building air so we'll see how it gets and it builds up and it purges and everything here Stop building air here, but I never heard it purge, so I'll we'll have to investigate a little bit more here. Yeah, that oil leak there was just from about two minutes of running. So this oil line <clears throat> was leaking, and when we went to take it off, the flare had broken off. So there's supposed to be a, a double flare. supposed to be a double flare on the end of that like that that copper line and it had cracked around the flare and it's actually stuck in the fitting we're going to take it off and we're going to try to uh, repair this here yeah the flare is broken off inside of there I gotta get that out of there So it broke. So that's good now. So you see you run it down in there with that first, and then you take it out, that black part out, and flare it. That folded the outside over. Okay. And then run the flare tool down on it there. Never forget to put that on. So that little 316 oil line goes to this alternator here. Um, it's an oil-cooled alternator, so it's gear-driven and oil-cooled, and that's what was leaking. Well, since we have the air pressure built up, we're going to go ahead and do our kind of our static air pressure test here, just make see how the bus is holding air now. Uh, this thing had about 40 PSI per minute air leak when it came in, and we seem to be holding air pressure really well here right now. Um, we're just going to we're going to go out 60 seconds on this and and see if we don't lose more than like two or three PSI on this and. We're going to call that a win, but uh, it seemed, so far it looks like it's pretty much a holding right in there where we need it to be. So let's just, we're going to go 60 seconds and see how much air we lose, though. Forty-five seconds into it, we haven't lost a single PSI.
Nice. Now that we got it cleaned up a little, we can start to kind of guess or tell where the oil leaks are coming from here. But that looks like it's coming back from that valley underneath the blower there. We just fixed the leak on the valve cover. Um, you want to go start it and run it? I'm going to check that leak on the alternator. We just fixed. We fixed a leak on that. Yep. pressure gauge he said it had been bouncing around and then it totally quit working and we just put a meter on it and we're not getting any power to it so whoever it's getting its power from so we're gonna pull the gauge out of this we can really test it good and maybe run a new power wire to it I'm not sure where it gets its power from it's kind of hard to have access back there so we can see that where that green lights at that that's that's the ground that's correct this is the power one the switch is in the on position right now there's no power to this so with the power probe, I can hold it on there and push this up and add 24 volts to it. If I do this and hold this, that circuit's now getting power and a bunch of other shit's powering up. But the gauge still isn't working. We started the bus and ran it like this. It's not working. But uh, it, it pops to life a little bit, but it doesn't get a reading. So we'll check the ohms on the um, resistance on the signal wire there. But I suspect the gauge is wrong. But whatever's powering this is also the buzzer and other stuff. And it's not obviously not getting power. The switch is... Some of the stuff has, the speedometer has power, but nothing else on the dash has power. And we turn the power on. So it could be the gauge is bad, but what caused that to lose its power and that whole other circuit with the low air buzzer and stuff like that, that needs to get fixed. So we'll have to figure out where that gets its power from. Okay, well looking at this here, there's a 30 amp breaker right there on the junction panel that comes to the master switch. Turn the master switch on um, and None of this stuff here is getting power, but the speedometer is jumping like it's getting power when that switch is tripped. So the speedometer is getting power. So that tells me that it's not this breaker here. If I follow this up here, I have this six amp breaker here. That must be the problem because the oil pressure, I don't think it has a fuel gauge. Uh, and then somehow this is also powering his... Um, low oil pressure and all that which is on that same circuit so there's the same 30 amp 1426 with that six right there is breaking it when i add power reversed to that then these low low air telltale comes on the low tag telltale comes on so it's got to be that six amp right there all right that was the 30 amp master and this is the, the dashboard one, the six amp one over here. So we're gonna locate this one in there and see if we're getting power through it and go from there. But my guess is that this auto resetting breaker is not working. Okay, I've got my 24 volts. That's the 30 one there. And then if I come down here to this, and here, that's the breaker that when the, the gold knob is pulled out right now, mm -hmm. and we have zero. So that should have power right now and be passing through. Okay, now go ahead and add back feed that power. 
24 volts. And that's 162 volts. Why am I getting such a crazy number? Did you stop it or did it trip? I just stopped it. Okay. So, I mean, I don't have a bad ground or anything. I got good voltage. This is not getting power, but when we, when we add it, when you're adding 24 to it, add 24 again. Why is it giving me 160.170? That's crazy. Okay, go ahead and stop. Let me touch this to where you're adding. Touch your thing to that and add it, power to it. Yeah, 24.7, so something's going on. I don't like. Okay, disconnected the power lead on there and taped it up and moved it to the side for a second. We're gonna try the gauge with no other, other wiring hooked to it and just we'll add raw power to it with the power probe here and see if that works. Can you add this to there and possibly hold it where I can see the gauge and then I'll start it and see if it's up. Can you give it now? Yeah, give it power. Okay, I'm gonna start the engine. gauge that has been getting wet there's water staining on the bottom of it so either the dash is leaking or the windshield wipers up under there when he's driving in the rain something's getting water in there okay so that six amp self-resetting down there um, is not working so we're going to replace that but did something cause it to short out? Why am I getting that strange voltage reading, which obviously it's not really a hundred and something volts, but why is it giving me such a weird reading by the time it gets there? What's going on with the wiring? Um, there, there are some other wiring issues on here. And it's old, it's 50 years old, more than 50 years old. When, once you start getting into this mess, it's like, oh God. All right, we went ahead and replaced the air governor on it because we had the old one on there, but obviously everything is so contaminated. A lot of valves and stuff are gonna end up needing to be replaced probably because of the contamination, but we're gonna keep draining tanks daily and trying to get everything out as much out of the system as we can. That's where we're at, at now we ordered a bunch of electrical parts the breaker and stuff like that and we'll get into that um boy that that could be a whole big can of worms uh it, it could just snowball into a huge huge bill but ha not having the low air buzzer working that's kind of dangerous very dangerous um and then obviously the oil pressure gauge we want to keep that going because if you lose oil pressure and you know you're out twenty thousand dollar engine or more uh so we're going to make sure we get those basic things working and then let him figure out everything else on his own there but that's where we're at today, and, and we shed the parts in on like Tuesday or so.